It's a joy to have Brother Ronald Roberts with us tonight. Brother Ronald, you make your way down here. Uh, I appreciate Brother Ronald. He pastored up in Bat Cave, North Carolina, and he's in evangelism now, and he's uh, in between. So you pray for him. God will touch him and help him as he preaches to our hearts. I love you, Brother Ronald. Thank God for you. Amen. I feel glad you're here tonight. struggle tonight while driving from uh, Western North Carolina out here to, uh, I get, where am I at? Leoma. Leoma, Tennessee. I struggled with trying to figure out what I was going to preach tonight, and I uh, walked into the motel and saw Brother Stacy Lane sitting there with about 30 sermons out, and I asked him if I could use one of his sermons. He said no, <laughs> and uh, I thought, man, if I preach one of his sermons and it flops, it won't be on me, it'll be on him, but he wouldn't let me have one, so I'm going to give you what's on my heart tonight out of 1 John chapter 2. Amen. The Lord knows my heart, I'm humbled and thankful to be here, and I'm just so glad to be saved and be a part of the family of God. I love you, I don't know you, but I love you, and I appreciate you letting me be with you tonight. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 1. The Apostle John had to say this, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I want to read the word, the verse one more time, and I want to emphasize the one word that's on my heart, and that is the word advocate. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. That's reading 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 1. If the Lord would help me tonight, and I want to preach on this subject. We have an advocate. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the access that we have to the throne of grace this evening. God, I just want to thank you for the privilege to be able to stand in this place. God, I'm not worthy. I know if it was up to me, Lord, I'd be somewhere else, but I'm thankful that sin did not abound over grace, and Lord, because of your mercy, I am what I am, and because of your love, yeah. I get to be here tonight. I pray that, Lord, you'd clear my head of thoughts that shouldn't be there. Yeah. God, I pray tonight that you'd give me unction from on high, and Lord, I pray for Brother Larry as he comes to preach, that, Lord, you'd touch him and help him as he brings his heart to the service tonight. And God, I pray that you'd bless this week and bless this dear pastor. God, I thank you for the message preached last night by Brother Chris. Thank you, Lord, for these men of God that are going to stand in these days and proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ. Lord, may you be lifted up in these days, and may we see Jesus more than we ever have. We pray everything in his name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the book of 1 John was written by the Apostle John sometime back during the latter part of the first century, part of, uh, while he was ministering there in Ephesus. Background study of this book reveals that the churches to whom John was writing to were quickly being led astray by a false teaching that would later on become known as Gnosticism. Gnosticism, in short, was a philosophical dualism which asserted that matter is evil and spirit is good. It ultimately rejected the humanity of Christ and it taught that man can only be saved if he possesses some sort of mystical knowledge about God. Much more can be said about this false teaching and its effects upon the early church, but the main thing that we need to recognize is that it called into question the sufficiency of Christ. Yeah. And at the same time, it gave excuse for men and women within the church to deviate from a life of holiness and indulge themselves with the pleasures of this world. So to rebuke this heresy, John starts out and kicks out of the gate in John chapter 1, verse 1, 1 John, and says, "...that which was from the beginning." which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. John intended to make clear while kicking out this chapter, that, uh, chapter 1, that Christ was more than some phenomenon or phantom, but that He was truly God and at the same time truly man. After having established the humanity of Christ in the earlier parts of John, 
of 1 John, we then transition into addressing the reality of man's sin condition. He says in verses 8 and 10 of chapter 1 that if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar and His truth is not in us. And the truth is tonight there are two types of people in this service. There are saved sinners and there are lost sinners. And we fall into one of those two categories. And John, along with every other New Testament writer, is clear about that truth. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God the Bible tells us that if we have confessed our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And the Bible tells us why there in verse number 1 of chapter 2, because we have an advocate with the Father. John's intention in writing this letter is to get the point across that the acceptance that you and I enjoy, every Christian benefit our salvation, is conditioned not by what you and I have done, but rather by what Christ has done and is continuing to do for us today. These Christians to whom John is writing to uh, were being tempted to fall back into a works-based religious system. They, like many today, uh, were so occupied with man-centered religion that many of them began to believe that Christ was not central, neither necessary for man to be saved. And it was for this reason that John put his pen to his paper, and I believe with a heavy heart, wrote to the people and said, My children, do not err. Do not look to yourselves, but look to Christ the Advocate, for in Him we find sufficiency, and in Him we find our salvation maintained. And so with that in mind tonight, I want to preach on that subject. We have an advocate. And what does that mean to us tonight when John says that? What does it imply? Well, first of all, tonight it implies that Christ has taken a place beside us. The word advocate is derived from a word that gives us our English word parachute. The word literally means to be called alongside another. What John is saying to the church is that, is that we have one who has been called alongside us. It's as though... He's echoing what the psalmist said in Psalm 109.31 where the psalmist said, For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. We have an advocate. That phrase, we have, is derived from one Greek word which is used in the present tense. In other words, what John is telling us is that we have and so shall we ever have an advocate alongside of us. I don't know about you, but that comforts my heart tonight to know that Jesus has no intention of walking off on me. He has no intention of tucking tail and running off, but he is the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible t- verse 23, the angel come to uh, Gabriel or the angel came to Joseph there in his dream and said to Joseph, "Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost." He went on to add that when he, boy when that boy is born, you shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 28 chapters transpire. And at the last verse of the last part of the book, that very baby has now grown up. He's standing on the Mount of Olives prior to his ascension to go and be with the Father. And he looks at the disciples and he said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's Emmanuel in chapter 1 and he's Emmanuel in Matthew chapter 28. He walks with His children. He abides with His children. He is the Savior that sticketh closer than a brother. Sometime back in my ministry, I got discouraged. And I went to the throne of grace and I said, Lord, I just feel so alone. And as I was praying, it was as though the Lord Jesus Himself come right up beside me and said, Ronald, if you're so alone, who are you talking to? Because the truth is tonight there's never been a time where He's never been with me. Psalm 139, Whither shall I go to flee from my presence? The Bible said, Whither shall I go to flee from my spirit? If I ascend up into heaven, behold, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea. He said, For even there thy hand shall lead me. He said, Thy right hand shall hold me up. David said, if I find the deepest, darkest hole in this world, if I was to plunge myself into the abyss of the sea, he said, I'll still find the grace of God and I'll still find his presence to be sufficient for every need. I'm glad tonight that he's chosen to take a place beside me. I don't deserve it tonight. As a matter of fact, I ought to be in hell 
but thank God somewhere back in eternity past uh, God purposed in himself after the counsel of his own will that he'd make his way in my direction he'd pick me up out of the ditch of sin and he'd save me by the grace of God and he purposed that he would walk with me in this life I was headed to hell without God headed to hell spiritually bankrupt but thank God he came to where I was and he ain't tucked out and left but he's still there today he's there he's there he's there he's there he's there I'm glad I have an advocate tonight no matter where I go he's always there hallelujah it speaks to his place beside us we have an advocate but also it speaks to his plea for us we have an advocate now there are many differences between an earthly advocate and our heavenly advocate a worldly advocate does what he does for money but jesus does what he does for souls worldly advocate may lie or try to sweep things under the rug so as to misguide the judge but jesus himself is the way the truth and the life he's never lied worldly advocate argues his case in a courtroom but Jesus argues your case and my case in a throne room. A worldly advocate argues the client's defense based upon how good the client has been. But Jesus argues our defense based off of his own goodness. We have an advocate. Hebrews 7, 25, wherefore? He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make, uh, to make intercession for them. Hebrews 9, 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Jude 1, 24, Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Colossians 1, 22, I like this verse in you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now hath He reconciled in the body of His flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. That word unblameable is derived from the Greek word of Nomos. The word means to be free from blemish. It was a sacrificial word. It was used in Bible times to describe a sheep that was fit for the slaughter. And what John and what John's telling us and what Paul is telling us is that the Son of God has come and He's taken us and He's placed us before God. And when God inspects us for blemish, when God looks to see if there's a defect, He steps back and says a Momos. In other words, He's clean. He's free to go. He's washed in the blood. Reconciled. Regenerated. Redeemed by the grace of God. I'm not saved tonight because I'm good. But I'm saved because He's good. I'm saved because He did for me what I never could have done for myself. I had nothing to give God. I was lost and undone and headed to hell. But He moved to where I was. And He took His righteousness. And He would and He put it over me and says, I know you're wicked. I know you're wrong. I know you're a deadbeat. Thank God you're free to go. And tonight I'm saved because Jesus paid it all. All to Him all. Sin had left a crimson stain, but He washed it white as snow. He put something on me hell can't take off. Speaks to his place beside us. Speaks to his plea for us. I hasten and I'll close. It speaks to his peace in us. I'll sleep like a baby tonight while hells are raging about me being saved. Why? Because I'm justified by faith. Romans 8 1, there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit began to think about qualities of a good advocate. What is it that qualifies one in this day and hour as a good advocate? Well, first of all, you need somebody who's smart. You don't want to hire an idiot to represent you in court. Someone with good analytical skills. 1 John 3, 20, For if our heart condemneth, God is greater than our heart, for He knoweth all things. 
You need someone, they say, who can create something in the courtroom. Someone who's very creative. Colossians 1.16, For by Him are all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. You need someone who has connections with the judge. That's a good thing. He looked at them disciples and said, I and my Father are one. You need someone with good communication skills. Somebody who can talk good. And men went back to them Pharisees and they said, why didn't you arrest Jesus? They said, never a man spake like this man. You need someone who is affordable. It's one thing to have somebody who possesses all those traits. But you need somebody you can afford. Can I afford Jesus? The Bible said, for by grace are you saved. And you need somebody that will take your case. I'd say somebody like that who's as busy like that. Somebody who's got all them qualities, they'd probably be pretty too busy for me. But my Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. Let him come, hallelujah. And I've got peace tonight like a river because of what Jesus did in my soul. I have an advocate tonight. I thought about this and I'll sit down. I remember... You know, Jesus said that the Son shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. Some years ago when I was a teenager, I got in trouble. And they put me in a, in a detention facility. And long story short, they had me in that facility for a long time. Felt like the walls were closing in on me. And I had a stepdad that was mean and all this, that, and the other. And really, it was his doing that I was in there. And I remember whenever I got put in that detention facility, I hated him and hated life as it was. And one day, I remember looking through that door. They had a little hole in that door. And I looked up at the nurse's station. They had a nurse that was keeping watch on me. And I looked through the, nurse, the, the, the window, and I saw the nurse's station, and I saw my real dad walk in. And as he walked up to the counter, I remember him pointing his finger at that nurse, and I couldn't hear what he was saying. But she was talking to him, he was talking to her, and then he pointed to my room. And that nurse came in there. And I'd been in lockdown for a couple of weeks. And that lady came in there, and she opened the door. She said, you need to get your stuff. She said, you're headed home. I said, I'm headed home. She said, yes. I said, why are you letting me go? And she looked at me, and she said, because your daddy said so. There was a time when I was bound by sin. I couldn't get out of it. I was bound by sin. Dead in sin. Couldn't even get out of it. Didn't even have a want to to get out of it. Spiritually bankrupt. Crossed up and walked and walking with this world. Headed to hell without God. But it was in the midst of my sin, in the midst of my depravity, that the advocate walked in. He looked at the devil and said, Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. And thank God, by the grace of God, he came to where I was and he broke the chains and he set my soul free, filled me with the Holy Ghost of God, washed away every sin, and thank God, qualified me, birthed me in the family, regenerated my soul. I'm glad tonight we have an advocate. Hallelujah. Amen, Ronald. 